If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It sorry it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You have to skip and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes. Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Okay, so up next, we went in for drilling. Dog fashion disco, dear listener. Yes, the next song coming up is a song called Grand Experiment. Grand experiment, dog fashion. This says a song sampling the style of guitar and surfer music that gives me a real good vibration. <laughs> One thing I'll say to every song I've heard of DFD, Polka Dot Cadaver, and every project this group gets involved in, they are genreless and proud of it. There are some songs one could easy, easily classify as country. Oh gosh. Or ska, SK. Ska, yeah. Uh, or punk or heavy metal. It's why I really love them. They will pull something from any possible genre and make it their own. The solo in this one is one of my favorites of Jason's steps. Okay. All right, here we go. This should be interesting. Dog Fashion Disco. The name of the song is, you say Grand Experiment? Yeah, I think that's what I said. Here we are, let's do it.
selling our formula officially. It's amazing stuff from Europe. May in Germany. So in America. Highest standards there are. In America, the standards haven't been updated since 1980. It's super weird, like older than me. In Europe, they update safety standards basically every year. This formula is top notch, great for the stomach, great for constipation. Yeah. This is a great product. If you happen to want to purchase it and join us on our journey, then grab the link in the description. If you do and leave a review for us, send me a screenshot at vinandstory at gmail.com of your review after you have received the product. We will put your name in a hat. Song reviews are going to come out by some of the people that have left reviews. Don't forget to send us a screenshot of your review once you get the product. Now a word from our mascot dressed as a pirate, Fuji. Ah! It's a deal of a deal. Wow. Cut it off. Okay. Cut off the lifeline. That was our friends in Dog Fashion Disco. This was uh, a little bit more of a complex song, a little bit uh, progressive almost, only not whack progressive, like really good progressive. <laughs> that makes sense and doesn't just show off that you went to a, uh, you know, guitar university or whatever. Well, I mean, he has. A, I'm not calling he has out a... any specific band out there. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Let's let's go. We got he the has, lyrics. Well, here. he has a lot of different songs and a lot of different genres, so maybe he's like, I don't have to pack it all in one. You know, you yeah. Can or make or, some or he's just actually talented, and you know, there's a difference between being trained and being talented. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people that are trained that are doing a great job as far as that shit go, but does not move people. Hmm. And for me, music is about moving people. I need some of that flower power because I'm growing weaker by the hour. Shatter my jaw, collapse my veins. Creepy crawlers dig a maze in my brain. <clears throat> so he needs he needs flower he needs uh, some uh, ganja. I guess because he believes that the ganja is going to help him. Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? I guess shattered my jaw, collapsed my veins. Yeah, he's, he's he got wrecked. Whatever happened to him, he got wrecked. Dancing devils in a chorus line. Jello gyrating in and out of time. Stabbing pains, intense withdrawal. I can't pick up if you don't call. <laughs> Looney bin freak out, death camp, skin and bones. I'm no fun to be around. Please don't leave me here alone. So he's at the he's at the uh he's, he's at the psych ward, it looks like. He got checked in. Cause he, he's saying, uh, 
I can't pick up if you don't call. So they left him alone in the uh, in the funny farm. That's what uh, shout out to Ed Mank, rest in peace to the homie. That's what <laughs> that's what he used to call you. Like, yeah, Vin, we're in the funny farm. This is yeah. nonsense. This is yeah. nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, we're all crazy here. Because <laughs> someone's like, you're all crazy. I'm crazy. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and Ed goes, this is nonsense. We're all crazy here. It's a funny farm, you idiot. <laughs> Shout out to Ed, man. Are you serious? <laughs> it turned into a, like, I'm more crazy than you? Oh, yeah. That was a big thing. Like, you're That's crazy. That's right. You said that. Your That's... craziness level, your your suicide level. Um, Shout out to Amy Lee, than you. Amy Lee forever. Yeah, like, were you really serious about killing yourself or were you just doing it for attention? Like, mm-hmm. it's literally like those were the conversations you had people that were, like, measuring the validity of people's attempts, all types of shit. You know how things go. Like, there's always got to be an elite group somewhere. Everything, you know what I'm saying? Everything. But I did see people that never got visited. Yeah. Like, I did too. I, I, toward, like, the last three months, nobody came to visit me because... My mom was banned from the hospital. They banned her. And, uh, you know, nobody else is in the state. So mm-hmm. I was I was pretty much by myself um, for three months. But I was I was OK with that because, you know, I was at war with mom Dukes anyway. It wasn't you know, what I'm saying it was it was a good thing that they they put some distance between us. Mm-hmm. But if somebody never visited me or never picked up the phone, because there were times that I was able to call my brother, talk to him. Um, you know, I was able to call Shorty once in a while, although she wasn't really, <laughs> she wasn't really interested in talking when I was in there, but, um, cause she was talking to she was talking to her boy. but like, yeah, that would, that would be hard if like nobody talked to me and if, if like, you know, I knew that my little brother would have come if my mom was able to come and see what I'm saying. Like, it's a lot different. Like if you're, if your family like chooses actively not to see you when you're in like the worst situation in your life, it, it could be, it could be pretty difficult. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I, he says. Looney bin freak out death camp, you know, especially when you first show up, when you first show up there, it's a, it's definitely an experience because like you're all screwed up from whatever it is that landed you in there. Your brain's all cloggy. Most of us like, we're, you know, like, try to use pills or whatever, whatever. So it was like, really, it was like your brain was all screwed up. You know, it took me a couple of days to like get right size because they, you know, dump all the charcoal down, you throw up all this. It's just like, it's literally like a living dead kind of scene type of type of situation. But everybody's kind of like in the same situation. So, wow. but yeah, it was definitely like, it definitely like felt the first couple of days and weeks, it felt like we we're in a death camp because everybody was talking about death too because. You know, it was suicide attempts. Like, we're all, you know what I'm saying? How healthy do you think that is to put everybody like that together? Well, well, what's fascinating to me, in my opinion, the most dangerous stuff came from some of the, you know, counselors, not the people. What do you mean? Because the people were already crazy. So, like, you knew that if I was speaking, you were talking to a crazy person. Mm -hmm. So, it's like. Okay, I might listen to what you Vin has to say or not, but if like a counselor says it, a person with some vested authority mm-hmm. says it, the people take what they have to say a lot more seriously than what your fellow that makes you know, sense. But inmate, what did they say inmate, that was inmate. well? Like for example, with me, where they were blaming everything on my parents, oh, right, right, right. So yeah. and you know, yeah. so that I didn't have to take any responsibility for anything, and I'm sure that they were they thought they were being nice to me, but that's not what I specifically. Knew. I didn't need that, you know, your parents suck. I already knew that they suck. I needed I needed to take responsibility and accountability for my own actions. I heard somebody say it's not about blaming other people, but it's about understanding where you came from. Well, yeah. I mean, and I think that that's like. That's important, but yeah. that's not what was going on with these guys. Right. At least, At least not for me, you know. And so, like, you know, there are some guys that were great. You know, that I, in my opinion, I thought they were great, but the hospital was like always on the edge with him, mm-hmm. you know, because the guy was like an ex Navy SEAL and he would say things like, well, then just kill yourself. Then. Like he was crazy, but he, he spoke the most to us, both me and Ed, that guy spoke the most to us. He's like, he's like, you're a really emotional guy. He said, I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, well, I see people shop, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
the only people I know that play guitar for that long are emotional guys. Oh. And like he called me out in front of the whole room and everything. I was like, what, okay. Were you, did you not like that? Or I was, did you? No, I respect. I respected it because like I didn't have the self awareness. Like yeah, dude, like you're putting a lot of your emotions through the guitar. Like I didn't. I didn't understand that because. Mm-hmm. I was so focused on like trying to learn my scales and shit, and like realizing like how how far I have to go on guitar that I wasn't like getting the spirit of what I was doing. But yeah, man, like ring around the rosy. I'm so happy that God chose me to be the pincushion lab rat in his grand experiment. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of people when they're going through a dark season like that, they just feel like yeah. they're just getting they're just getting attacked. Yeah. You know, like, and I feel I feel bad for those people because. They have an awareness of God, an awareness somehow of God's sovereignty that, like, at some level, if God is all-powerful, he could stop this thing from happening to me. But they don't come to God for the comfort. Yeah. So it's it's a very um, interesting theology that these dark intelligences whisper to us. It's like, we will give God credit for the terrible things in our life, but we won't give him enough credit that he will comfort us or anything like that. So, mm-hmm. like, your, your only belief in God is to stand and blame him for the bad things that are happening but not go to him for comfort so then what are you going to go to for comfort well he says he's got he's got the flower power and all the rest of it but obviously that's not going to solve the problem at the at the deep level yeah i think the other thing too is that we don't recognize all the time especially when you're in a really bad spot you don't recognize all the areas in which god so you only seen the bad side so for instance you know the bible says that every good and perfect gift comes down from God. So like anything good that comes into your life, that's from God. Reza, I'm going to have to ask you to stop doing that. Just go ahead. Um, so like every every perfect, like every good gift that you have in your life comes from God. But, but sometimes we're so bent on seeing the negative that you cannot see the positive anymore. So like for instance, if, if there is dark intelligences, and obviously we believe that there are, um, those like to bring fear they like to bring terror they like to you know just this this darkness this heaviness that never feels like it's going to lift and so anytime that you're not experiencing terror you're experiencing some goodness from god's hand and a lot of times that gets overlooked or i know these things sound so basic but there's so many things that we just and and i think that i've kind of been on this like journey of like returning to a, a kind of like a state of gratefulness because i think i was kind of getting to that place where I felt like everything was just, I think I was getting really negative about a lot of things, but like even there's so many things that we take for granted and we don't even recognize like how, how amazing it is. Like, I mean, even, even the fact that God like holds everything together and the fact that we wake up from sleeping and we can breathe and there's so many involuntary things that our body does to take care of us. And we don't even realize that it's happening because it's so out of our minds. Mm -hmm. If you get cut today, that starts healing immediately and it's going to be healed in a couple of days. That's because God is giving you something good and God is healing you. And I think that we just, we just, we, those are things that we're like, yeah, who even thinks about that? If you get cut today, that God is starting to heal you. You've been, you've been accepting that healing at his hand for years, maybe your entire life. And you've never turned back to say, Hey, thanks. Thanks for doing that. You think that that's just happening because some puddle of ooze became something back a long time ago, you know, like, so I think that perspective is really, really important. And when we have a negative perspective and when we think that God is just bad all the time and he's, and he's after us, or he's holding like everything, like a carrot in front of our nose, or he's using us like a pin cushion, um, those types of things, like it, when your mindset gets that point and it's not even something that you fake, it's like something that you are and you, you live in that. And it's like, like you say, a fish doesn't know it's wet, but you just start realizing that you're just miserable all the time. You're miserable and you can't see, there's no positive. There's no break from anything. It's just, everything is just bad all the time. Well, maybe that's because you're just seeing only the bad. And that's, that's, you've like trained yourself because our minds are incredibly powerful and they will see and take in and believe what we believe like that becomes too much, like so much of our reality. So if you believe that God is like that, then that's the way that you're going to see it. You're going to see everything that happens in your life as all these negative and it's like, oh, he's doing all these things, but you're missing all the grace that's been around you. And, you know, like I said, we, we take that for granted. We're not, we're none of us are guaranteed our life. Nobody's promised tomorrow, but yet, we, you know, we expect it. We, we make plans for tomorrow. We make plans for next week or next year because we expect that we're going to still be breathing. We expect that God's going to keep giving us what he's been giving us. Um, but we don't even turn to, to thank him or, or turn to acknowledge that he's done those things in our lives. 
and I'm talking to myself first because, like I said, I've, I've progressively, as, as the years have gone on, have become more and more pessimistic. And I, I've been really realizing that lately. And it's, and it's actually like changing my perspective and I'm starting to see things differently. And I'm starting to realize that there's actually like a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of good and overlooked gifts. And that's one of the, one of the reasons also why I love having kids is because they kind of put you in those situations where, um, you teach them these things and then they start seeing it and they'll announce it whenever they see it. You know, like every time Orion gets hurt, he's like, God's healing me. And then when it heals, he's like, look at that. God healed me. And it's just, it's like, yeah, like that's, you know, that's, that's his reality. Turn it off a little bit. Let me just turn that on. Please turn it off. Ah, uh, love it. What'd you give the song? Uh, I gave this one a 9.1. Yeah, I gave it a solid 9.4. I did give it a 9.1, but the solo pushed it up. I did like the Beach Boys type aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I feel like some of this shit is random, but like when you're really smart like that, you can you can do like 5% of random shit. People think you did it on purpose. <laughs> like, I've written shit on guitar that's like really good and it's like completely accidental. Like, oh, wait a second. You like, like you witnessed one of them. I was like, oh shit, hold on. That's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Isn't it better to think God is bad because you believe he exists and not to think on on him at all? I. Ooh, no, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. If you look at the Psalms, you, you have the psalmist going at it with God. And that's obviously better for God than not talking at all. No. Are, are we talking about talking? Yeah, I agree. If you're talking to him and you're saying, look, I think you're bad for this. You're wrong for this. Yeah, I think. I think people should talk. I do think, though, that I, I don't think that you can. Anything is better than thinking completely nothing about him. Thinking that he doesn't exist at all. Yeah, I like do not think thinking though, about God at all to me is a lot worse than um, thinking he's bad. Because in Hebrews it says, to please God, you must first believe that he is. And then it goes into the faith chapter it says, Please God, you have to first believe that He is. So if you're if you're walking around, oh, you've pre- already pretending. Oh, that's interesting. You're already denying that He is. Yeah. Okay. So not even the devil does that. Yep. I mean, the devil has enough sense to know that God exists, and he and he think. See, the thing is, when you're mad at somebody, you're more inclined to think about them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're the person in your mind. That's one of the reasons why I I do my best not to get mad at people. Mm-hmm. You know, like when I feel myself getting really really angry with a person, that's when I like completely shut down. Because I don't want that person in my mind. So before I get to the point when I'm genuinely angry with them, I'll like, I'll just not, I'll just, that'll be it. Because I don't want to, I don't want to make that emotional investment in anybody. Mm -hmm. Especially if I'm beefing with the person. I definitely don't want to, like for me, the best thing is like, they just, I'm not going to say it like that. But yeah, anyway, I I think God absolutely prefers. I would say, yeah, I think especially because you brought up that that verse. I'm really into Hebrews right now too, um, but there there's a verse in Hebrews that says, um, yeah, shoot, I forgot where I was going to go with that. I, I think I agree with you though. I think that I don't think though that God will leave you forever in that state where you're just only and ever angry oh, at Him. And, no. I, and I, hold on, let me let me finish that. There's a verse in Hebrews that basically says, like today, if you hear His voice. Like, don't harden your hearts like they did when they were, you know, when they were roaming around in the wilderness. He says, don't do that. It, if you hear his voice today, like, like respond to him while you can still call it today, because there's going to come a time where there's no longer time because we're, we live, we live in an existence where there's been a beginning and there will be an end, but then we're going to enter an existence that's outside of time. It's timeless and it's eternal. Like God is eternal. And so I think that in, in that sense, he's saying, it, you can still say today because we are still living in time. You're still alive. You're still breathing. It's today for you. You can call today, today. So if you're hearing God today and you feel him saying, hey, like this is truth, but you're f- afraid because there are different things that don't make sense to you, then you can be like that guy that came up to him and he said, look, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because Jesus, he was having a conversation with Jesus and Jesus said, do you believe? And he said, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think that that's really, really important. If today... You feel like, wait a minute, I think this God thing is true, but I have a lot of problems with a lot of some of the things that it says in there. That's okay. We can start with that. We can work with that. But if you feel that today, then respond to that and say, God, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, I believe that, that you are, but I don't know if I can, I can swallow all the rest of this stuff. 
and he's going to help you with that. But I think that that definitely there's there's something really and I haven't really like completely like wrapped my heart around it. But there's something really, really important about when you have that moment. And I think part of it is because I had a moment where I felt like God was like, jump on this moment. And I didn't. And stuff got really, really dark for me for a while. And so the next time I had one of those moments pop up, I was like, it's today. I'm jumping on this one. And so I don't know why that happens where stuff kind of like can go in, in like cycles. And there's no, and there's no promise that you're going to have another, another one of those days either. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, so that, so yeah, I guess, right. If you're angry with him, I would actually think that that's probably a good sign because like you said, you are, there's already belief, which means that God is already pleased with you, even in your angry state. Mm-hmm. Agree. Uh, and I also agree, thing, DC, I out, but the, the, universe, the universe is an infinite, so we're not God. I agree with you. But uh, Shoot, I forgot. Anyway. All right, uh, 9.4, what'd you give it? Uh, I think I gave it 9.1. All right, stay where you are, dear listener. We we'll have right one back. more song coming for you. We shall return. Vin out. Sorry, out. Gone.